Do please be seated. Sorry. I'm allowed to do that. A very warm welcome to everybody. Isn't it nice to be back in here again, in our place, in, as I said just now, into into the familiar. And um, we're just grateful for that. Do have to remind you, of course, that all those restrictions are still in place. And if there is anybody with us who hasn't been here before for communion, do please remain seated as we bring communion to you. Thank you. So welcome to our worship. The Lord be with you. This fifth Sunday of Lent is often known as Passion Sunday. The readings and prayers, as you might expect, now turn us towards Jerusalem and to the cross. Today I'm sure you're very aware that we face an anniversary. A year has passed since the first lockdown and there is going to be a particular um, little celebration, not celebration, but a marking of that occasion on Tuesday. Um, The nation will have a moment of quiet and reflection at 12 noon. Everybody's invited just to stop and be there. But the churches are suggesting that we gather today might like to spend a little time in quiet um, as we remember so many people who are suffering with so much loss, uncertainty in their lives, walking a journey of grief. So I'm going to light a candle, our baptism candle, A candle that we always light for life, for the beginning and at its ending. We have a prayer which I read for you. It's on the leaflet and you might like to use it on Tuesday. And then we will keep silence. God of love, as we think about all that has changed this year, help us to trust that you are always with us. As we remember those who have died, help us to trust that they are at peace with you. And as we reach out to others with kindness and care, May hope shine out in every heart and home. Amen. Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and a living way into your presence. Give us new hearts, constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And 
And so we come now to our prayers of penitence. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. We are often slow to follow the example of Christ. Lord, have mercy. We often fail to be known as Christ's disciples. Christ, have mercy. We often fail to walk the way of the cross. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer, our collect for this week. Gracious Father, you gave us your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to listen to our first readings. Thank you. The first reading today is taken from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 to 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is from Paul's epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 5 to 10. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. Those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please sit down. May the words that I speak and the thoughts of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This was my wake-up call this morning. First of all, a verse from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. This little piece is called Hope. You don't need to create your own hope. The sky is full of it. Wake up early one day, I dare you, and watch the sunrise. Watch how it encourages the earth to become itself, only more so. Watch how it allows all things, even the sad beings, to be colourful and beautiful. And then listen. Listen, as it says quietly, but undoubtedly, we begin again. I should stress that I was not up at dawn this morning, but that little piece I get every morning from Tear Fund. Um, and as soon as I'd read that, I realised that it ties in with those readings so perfectly. And... As it happens, we also have a beautiful morning, a day first revealed by the dawn, somewhere around six o'clock, and now coming into its full glory. Each day is a new beginning. Each day starts over. And I think it was Captain Sir Tom Moore who said, today is going to be a good day. Every day he woke up aware of that reality. Jesus, though, was troubled. Our readings both talk about new beginnings. But for Jesus, there had been a real consciousness that the journey he was on could only lead to that new beginning through dying. And so his words about seeds, familiar as they are, had a particular poignancy for him. 
He had gone through three years of ministry. He knew what that three years was about. He knew what his father had given him to do. And yet he had reached a point where he says, I am troubled. Just as we would be, and always are, when we are facing challenges, crises, difficult moments. We wonder how we're going to cope. We wonder how we're going to go through with it. Yet God's promise is always that there will be something new. We begin again. I love those words. Because with God, there is always a new start. I'm sure many of you have been out on your walks in these last few weeks. Um, I know some of you have because I meet you out there. And if you have, you'll have seen the signs of the new life. Spring, springing. You probably saw some on the way this morning, the daffodils and the crocuses. And I hope you were able to get into the uh, memorial garden to see that wonderful carpet of crocuses uh, to help you with your reflections. It's quite beautiful. And of course, the trees are starting to bud now. Some of them have got quite vibrant leaves. If you walk up the churchyard, you will see the bright purple. And if you walk elsewhere in the churchyard, you'll see the sort of magenta white of the blossom as it starts to greet a year that is coming into its full flower. We're not there yet by a long way. And I thought about all of that because, of course, today, quite literally, we begin again. And Joy, of course, has mentioned uh, that on Tuesday, it is a year since we first heard the Prime Minister's announcement that we had to stay at home. And what a year that has been. And twice we seem to have had a sort of false dawn. We thought we were beginning again, and then it didn't quite happen. And so, exactly one year after my first service from the dining room table, we are back in here. We begin again. Because God, who gives new life, never lets us down. God, who always gives us a fresh start, gives us the strength to keep going. Of course, it has been a difficult year. We have lost friends and loved ones. And for many, many in our nation, there has been the most excruciating pain of losing loved ones not only through a terrible illness, but also perhaps because they've been unable to accompany loved ones on that final journey. And yet God's promise stands. We begin again, which is what we do now. And what Jesus is talking about is transformation. Yes, we've mentioned transforming church, transforming lives many, many times here. But Jesus talks about a seed which is transformed. And actually, the only way that seed will be transformed if it's, is if it stops being a seed. It can't continue being a seed if it is to come to flower. And perhaps what we have seen here in the last year is simply the seed, that which will later on become the flower. Perhaps the flower that we're not even remotely expecting Jesus knew that he had to die that the seed that was contained in his ministry had to die if you like so that it could come to life and bear fruit in due time and perhaps that's a message for us too a few chapters on from that very complicated chapter in John, we read of Jesus' words, I am the vine, you are the branches. Our, our ministry, our purpose is to bear fruit. 
fruit which ultimately has come from a seed which died. Indeed, of course, very often the fruit contains the seed which later dies and grows again. Jesus knew the significance of what he was saying because this wasn't just about horticulture. This was about a life which will never end. When we enter into the life of Christ, we quite literally begin again. And when we fall over and stumble on our journey, God in Jesus picks us up and says, that's okay, we begin again. The reading from Jeremiah is all about transformation as well. As I'm sure I've said many times, that for the Jewish people, the heart was not the seat of emotions. It was the seat of rational thinking. It was the, what we would call the mind. Interestingly, the, the seat of the emotions in those days was always considered to be the kidneys. And so God says through his prophet Jeremiah, I'm going to give you a new mind, a new way of thinking, your stone of heart, your mindset which is literally set in gel or aspic, frozen where it is. I will warm up. I will turn from something cold into something living and beating which sustains life, which enables life and enables life to be given to others. A new heart, quite literally, takes us out of our old way of thinking and into something new. And perhaps that's something we have to hold on to as well. At the end of this long year, well, we hope it's the end, I can't promise anything. Um, <clears throat> I haven't been any words of knowledge about the Prime Minister's next statements, but we believe and pray that this will be the, a new start. It could be a new start in all sorts of different ways. But let's pray that with Jeremiah, that new start will be, first of all, in the way we think, the way we interact with one another, in the way we proclaim good news and live out the good news to those around us in the community. You may remember the start of that gospel reading where some Greeks came to see Jesus. Well, they didn't see Jesus, they saw Philip. And he went to Andrew and Jesus gives what seems to be quite an oblique answer. I did a bit of research on this, but of course Greek was the lingua franca in those days. Everyone spoke Greek, who was anyone. And so the word Greeks almost certainly means those who weren't Jews, Gentiles perhaps people who spoke another language. They were people who wanted to know about Jesus. We want to see Jesus. We want to know what this Jesus chap is like. Take us to him. We want to learn more. There's so much which could be said about Jesus' words that follows. Of course, including those famous words about the seed dying before it can bear fruit. But Jesus then talks further about his journey to the cross. And he says something very significant. When I'm lifted up, I will draw all people to myself. I'm sure that's a reference to the Greeks, to the people who are not Jews at the beginning of that, that section. And perhaps one of the things the church has got to do before almost anything else is to learn a different attitude to those around us in the community, those around us who share our world, who don't share our culture or presuppositions, but who nonetheless are loved and embraced by God in Jesus. Perhaps there are many people we can reach out to who we wouldn't have thought to. Perhaps we need to think of new ways in which we can reach those who don't necessarily speak the language of the church, who aren't familiar with the things that we are, perhaps that's the first and most important mindset. And for those of you who don't know, by the way, just in this parish, the Church of England's figures are much more impressive. Uh, 
million people have accessed the main Church of England services over the past year. But on most weeks, I haven't got Becky here to guarantee this, but I think we have been somewhere around 150, 160 viewers. I'm getting thumbs ups from the, from the back here. That's about twice as many as we were getting into church. And that's devices, by the way. We don't know how many people were watching those devices. There is a whole new area of ministry we need to access. And thank goodness, and thank the Lord, we have Terry and Claire today, Becky and Amy as well, and we hope a few others before long who will be able to do the webcasting so that others can join us. And if you're joining us at home, we hope too that even though you're not present with us, you can understand and feel the blessing which is ours as we join together in God's presence because you are part of that too. And so on this day, the day when we remember that we all stopped, yes, we begin again. And we begin by dying perhaps to what we were, so that as we bear fruit, others will come and know the good news of God in Jesus. Jesus who died, and yet in whose death and resurrection, new life that goes on forever is ours forever. Amen. So let us now together affirm our faith. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So do please be seated again as Matthew leads us in our prayers. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He can transform death and despair in any of its ugly forms into life and hope. Holy God, breathe your life into the church. Breathe holiness and deepening faith. Breathe energy, inspired teaching, and profound praise. Make us receptive to your gentleness and your power. The response to Lord, through your love, is transform our lives. Lord, through your love, transform our lives. <coughs> As we begin to worship together again and to meet face to face once more, help us to, help us to practice responsible engagement and understanding. Help us to share and connect with each other and give encouragement to those who have not yet had the opportunity to worship together. Lord, teach us to reach out and transform our world through responsible caring, compassion and honesty. Lord, through your love, transform our lives. As our government prepares to transform our economy to mitigate climate change, inspire us to adopt change through Christian values, 
stewardship of nature, by reconciliation, through a vision for the future, for the sake of our children and our younger generation. Lord, give us hope and commitment for the transformation of our way of life and breathe inspiration in all levels of society for a sustainable future. Lord, through your love, transform our lives. Help us to transform our communities, lock in the spirit of community that we have learned over the past year. Lord, breathe new life into the charities which support those in need in the community, particularly those charities which give help in so many ways to people with disabilities, mental ill health, the isolated, the marginalised, young, young families and older, older people. Let us give our support to the Bishop's Lent Appeal, the Bishop of Guildford's Communities Fund, dedicated to understanding our communities and providing help for vital services at this time when it is so urgently needed. Lord, through your love, transform our lives. Transform our homes and place of work at this time of social change. Give us patience and understanding to recognize those changes which will improve our way of life and benefit others. Lord, give us courage to live a Christian life. Use this opportunity of Lent to, in the words of our Archbishop, do a new thing which will lead the way to positive change. Lord, through your love, transform our lives. Transform the lives of those who suffer. Give them comfort, wholeness, forgiveness, and new confidence. Knowledge of your love and peace of mind. We pray especially for Audrey Gullett, Chris Russell, and Ruth Russell, and Matt Greenwood. Through your love, transform our lives. Breathe hope into the dying, courage for the journey, and help them put their trust in you. Breathe life that lasts forever. Pray especially for the friends and family of Roddy Leatham and Bill Carley, who have recently died. Lord, through your love, transform our lives. May this worship strengthen our resolve and commitment to reach out to others, especially the isolated, in every way and any way that we are able, and give our companionship to them during this time of Lent. Holy God, breathe your life into us now as we offer you here our thanks and praise for your life laid down and love for us. May our words be transformed into actions and into fresh commitment to you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs>
think we have with the magic of technology some music, so do please be seated as we prepare the table. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us. And revealed, he put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Granted by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life. We eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, we celebrate the memorial of our redemption. And we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. Gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
body of Christ keep you in eternal life.
Our prayer after communion. We thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. So, a moment to look at the um, leaflet, which is on your seat. Please, will you take it with you? Um, that just avoids the clearance according to COVID. All right, so if you can just slip that in your pocket and take it away with you. And, of course, peruse it, and we'll have some... Um, advanced details of, of worship to come. Next Sunday, of course, is Palm Sunday. It won't be quite the same, but we mark the day the best we can within the rules. Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. That will move into the three holy days, the Tridium. So Maundy Thursday at a different time, at six o'clock, we're going to mark that festival. And then we move into Good Friday and gloriously to Easter Day. Do take note, those of you young of heart, with the excellent Easter Trail and opportunities for our morning prayer, coffee and chat and keeping in touch. Did you want to add something before the blessing? Just yeah, I don't know the details. Um, of course, this Tuesday is the first anniversary. Uh, the Church of England has linked in with Daffodil Day, which of course is Marie Curie. Um, 
and most churches i hope i think will be open um, there will be a minute silence at 12 noon here i will be around um, i will probably say the prayer that joy said earlier which is our mm. national prayer for yes. the uh, for this uh, this day it's printed here so you can pray it yourself at home um, uh, but the church will be open this tuesday usual sort of hours because we think many people will want to come in and take a few moments for reflection and perhaps to light a candle and claire are we doing something with yellow ribbons right okay there will be scope for everybody to express their support not only of the church of england's um, initiative in this but also to perhaps express our support for those who are supported by the Marie Curie Foundation. Um, so if you would like, if you're passing by and you would like to tie a yellow ribbon to the railings, that would be terrific. The more we have there, the better. So I hope I shall see you on Tuesday. We offer our prayer of blessing before we depart, but there is um, a very short vid sorry, am I saying what you're going to say? <laughs> um, there's going to be a very short video um, at the end of the service, about two minutes in length. Yeah. Would you sit tight and just, just watch that, a message about the Bishop of Guildford's Foundation. And when that's over, if you could just depart um, as sensibly as we've always done, quietly, a few at a time um, and no congregating at the door. We can't come and chat. I'm sorry about that. The love of God is at home in us. We go out in peace. The justice of Jesus is at home in us. We go out in hope. The wildness of God's spirit is at home in us. We go out in wonder and joy. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in time, in peace, in love, to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.